one, this is a trail camera, this was right off our driveway. Uh, and most pet deaths could have been avoided if owners would have been a little bit more vigilant. We had one dog that was killed here near Lons. The owner let the dog out at 3 o'clock in the morning, went back to bed, and at 6 o'clock, the dog wasn't home yet, went out looking for it, found it a mile away where the wolf had killed it. <laughs> Front page headlines, you know, wolves kill pet dog. Well, I care very much about my dogs. I would never think of letting my dog out at 3 o'clock without me being there. And uh, another, this was um, a, another wolf pup on Gardner Road being fed by while driving along the road. That is the worst thing you can do. Um, she was, they were throwing in sandwiches and stuff, and we got a picture of this animal, and they thought it was neat to feed it. And I'm going, wolf pups grow up to be wolves. They don't understand that you've run out of marshmallows. So the best thing you can do is to never feed a wolf, either directly or indirectly. A fed wolf is a dead wolf. Uh, do everything you can to avoid habituating wolves to humans. Um, if wolves start to get acclimated to your house, they're going to start hearing um, hearing sounds, hearing you, and they're going to go, oh, this is okay. Smelling foods. Don't ever let them get close to you. If you start to see them, yell at them, shout, make them go away. They will run off with making loud noises. This is true for coyotes. We have coyotes that was kind of hanging around our house in our woodshed, probably looking for mice and things like that. We fired a shot in the air, um, just a shotgun up in the air. That coyote took off. He's never been back. Uh, so just, and then when I say directly or indirectly, directly would be leaving food out for them. Indirectly, though, is feeding deer. I often hear people say, oh, I had wolves in my field. And the very first question, were you feeding deer? Oh, yeah, I like to feed deer. Well, wolves eat deer, so your best bet is not to be feeding deer, especially close to a residential area. i uh, just going to take a few more minutes on this last few slides here, um, where we stand on the wolf status. Good news is we've been removed from the endangered species list. The bad news is we've been removed from the endangered species list. So it all depends on what side of the coin you want to be on. Current status. As of January 27th of 2012, wolves were federally delisted in the Great Lakes region. Um, by the way, this wolf was on Highway 16. In Michigan, we have PA 520, which is what brought us all here together, uh, designating the wolf a game animal and authorizes a hunting season. In Minnesota, um, wolves, we've had our first hunting season in Minnesota. 395 wolves have been killed during the first hunting season. And in Wisconsin, we also have had a hunting season. 117 wolves were killed during the hunting trapping season, but then other wolves were killed for a total of 244 wolves. Last year were killed in Wisconsin, either through hunting, trapping, wildlife services, car kills, and illegal kills. So the Wisconsin wolf population has been reduced by at least 25%, between 25 and 30%. Both Michigan and Wisconsin have wolf management plans that strike a balance between protecting the wolf and resolving conflicts. I can't repeat enough how many times, how many times to repeat it, that we do have management authority to resolve conflicts. We can have non-lethal measures and we have lethal measures. Wildlife services come on property. Landowners can have, uh, as I mentioned, have landowner permits to kill wolves. You can kill the wolf in the act. But what we have is management by legislation and not science. And we have, as I said, we have the bills here. We also have another bill now that pays for, or law, that pays for missing livestock based on uh, a notarized statement. So, we all have experiences, values, attitudes, and it shapes our image of the wolf. And I believe through education we can find ways of, to coexist with the wolf. We, further recovery is going to depend on everybody's individual values. And will we continue to make room for wolves? And the big question, the philosophical question, is how many are too many? And a quote that says, I've always said that the best wolf habitat resides
lies in the human heart. You have to leave a little space for them to live. And that's by Ed Banks, now retired from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. 